How to set up search alerts for the contacts in your KV Core CRM. My name is Karamoko from Karamoko Homes and that's what we're going to be talking about today. It's very, very easy. I'll walk you through step by step. You do not need any prior knowledge before watching this video. But if you do need an in-depth introduction to KV Core altogether, I'll leave a video in the description so that you can watch that and get acquainted with using KV Core. But that's enough said, let's hop on the computer and get right to it because that's what you came here for. All right, so when you log on to KV Core, you're probably going to see your dashboard first, okay? So the place we wanna go to to set up a search alert for a client or a lead in your system would be under the Smart CRM tab. And it's under the Smart CRM tab you can find all of your contacts, okay? And the Smart CRM tab is going to be on the left-hand side under this uh, dark gray menu. If you don't see this menu, it's probably because the menu is collapsed and you would want to press on the three bars at the top left of the website, okay? So I'm gonna do, do as such and then it's going to expand this menu and then you will be able to see the Smart CRM. So after clicking on Smart CRM, you will see all of the contacts within your database, okay? So I do not wanna share any personal information for any of the clients I have on my system, so I always use fake contacts for these tutorials, okay? So in this tutorial, we're going to be using Alicia right here, who's in my system. Alicia is not a real person, so please don't try to call Alicia. Uh, it's just a fake uh, contact, okay? So I just clicked on Alicia and noticed that a box will pop up with more information on Alicia, okay? So we're going to be focusing on the right-hand side of this contact panel, okay? I call it a panel, you could call it a box or a pop-up window, but on the right-hand side, we're going to notice we can take certain actions, okay? But we're not going to click anything within the actions box. We're going to actually look a little bit under that. And if you notice, it'll have an option right here that says property alerts, which is the whole topic of this video. You guessed it, that's where we're going to be working on. So if I wanted to set a property alert or a search alert for Alicia, this is exactly where I would go to do that. Okay, so you guessed it, we're going to click the add button right next to property alerts like such. And once I click add, it's going to open up another tab under Alicia's contact. Because if you notice up here, it still says Alicia's name, okay? Um, so I wanna make it clear, you do not have to do it this way. There's multiple ways for you to actually create a property alert or property, uh, a search alert. So method one could be to just go ahead and click add right here like I just showed you. Or from this menu, if you notice at the top right here, you actually have different tabs you can click on. One of those is alerts, okay? So if I was to click alerts right here, it's gonna take me to the same exact place. Okay, so once you're on this page, this is where all the magic happens and where you can actually create that alert for your contact. And in our example, it's going to be Alicia for this one. So already notice at the top, we have two options, alert one and alert two. So you guessed it, you can only create up to two alerts per contact as of the making of this video. Okay, so one single person can have two different search alerts, um, you know, enabled at the same time and receive notifications for each of those alerts based on the criteria as you set. So we're gonna be doing one together and the second one's gonna be the same exact thing, okay? So there might be situations where a single client is looking for two different types of properties, maybe for themselves or for somebody else they're shopping for, and you wanna make sure that they're getting all of the properties that match you know, those different criteria. So you can have up to two searches per person. So right now we're going to click on alert one, and that's where we're going to create the first you know, search alert. So let's say, for example, Alicia here was looking for a three bedroom, two bathroom, single family home in a, a, a city of our choice. Let's say the city of Lomita, for example. Okay, if you're not in California, you probably have no idea what city I'm talking about, but the same would apply on any city in your um, respective state. So at the top right here, notice that we have plenty of fields we can fill out. So all of these fields are basically the criterias. K 
KV Core is gonna look within to find you know properties to alert our contact with. So in our example, um, let's say Alicia is looking in the city of Lomita. So I'm just gonna type Lomita in here. Oh, like so, L-O-M-I-T-A. And as you type these in, you'll get a drop down and you'll be able to choose whether you want to look within a city, just the area, uh, schools, neighborhoods, uh, you know, you have plenty of options. So just be sure to select what you're looking for. Okay, so you can click on that and then you will have a drop down, uh, you know, a little confirmation that you've actually selected that city. So you are able to select multiple cities at once. I don't have to just do Lomita. If I wanted to, I can maybe include the city of Hawthorne, like so. And as you type, it'll load up with that information and then you can click on it, okay, like such. It doesn't have to be cities. It could be zip codes, you know, counties, uh, or, you know, areas that you draw yourself. So if you wanna focus on your own a specific area, you can utilize the draw on map tool to draw only where you want the search to be within, okay? But that's a little more advanced and uh, feel free to play around with that if you want, but it's very cool and it's an extra feature you do have at your disposal. So um, we just wanna stick with the city of Lomita, so I'm gonna remove the city of Hawthorne, okay? I'm gonna click the X right here. All right, so after I have done that, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit now we get to select the type of listing we want to you know generate from our search okay because i don't want alicia to just get everything because alicia is not interested in everything she just wants single family so that means she doesn't want to receive condos she doesn't want to receive duplexes she doesn't want to receive you know farmland so we need to be sure to only include the most important things alicia is looking for or your client is looking for so in here under listing type, once you click on it, you're gonna get a drop down, and on here you'll be able to select the listing type. So for us, it's gonna be single family, so I'm gonna click on that. Like the uh, area above, you can select multiple types of um, listing uh, listings. So maybe Alicia wouldn't mind condos, so you can have single families and condos, but if you know for sure your contact wants a specific kind of listing, I will only stick to that. So I'm gonna remove condos and also remove income. Now you also have price range categories, how many beds, how many baths. So for Alicia, let's say she wanted a three bedroom and two bath. I'm just going to put three bedrooms in here. I'm gonna leave the bathrooms alone. I could go ahead and put it, put the number of bathrooms in here, but sometimes the more uh, strict you are, which are, you know, preferences you might leave out certain um, listings you know or properties that Alicia may have otherwise you know considered so I like to leave the search criteria a little bit open but not too open because I know the most important thing probably would be the number of beds and uh, bathrooms we can you know kind of play around with what we get in terms of results but hey if Alicia specifically only wants three beds and two baths I can just go ahead in here and just click on the two or more. And that's only what I'm gonna get, okay? But I like to leave my search parameters a little open. That way we have more listings to choose from and not leave out any potential things Alicia may have you know, wanted to, to see. So I'm gonna leave this as any and we're gonna keep the number of bedrooms there, okay? Because rarely the amount of bathrooms exceeds the amount of beds, uh, but there are exceptions to that rule. So. Just like with that, you can also, you know, select how many, the square footage, how many acres, the year built, you can filter based on all of that. But I'm gonna leave this all open so that KV Core can look at, you know, all of the different options available to us. Again, when you're too specific with your criterias, you might leave out, you know, important properties your contact may want to see. Okay, so just to show you what's available, you have all of this. You can also filter out, you know, specific keywords such as, you know, just listed, walkable, fixer upper. If your contact is interested in any of these, um, you could go ahead and check those on here. But yet again, remember, the more specific you are, the less you're going to receive in results. Okay, so leave as many fields as open as possible, I would say, just to kind of get the ball rolling and get them seeing, uh, get them to see some properties. 
okay? And then all the way down, you have a very important field called frequency. So under this field right here, you can choose how often will the contact receive emails, uh, you know, including all of these results. So you can have this be once a week, as soon as possible, meaning whenever something comes on the market that matches those criteria, the lead will be emailed immediately. Okay, you can do it daily, twice a week, once a week, twice a month, or just monthly, okay? So depending on the urgency of the lead or you know your communication with the lead, just kind of gauge how often they would like to receive these emails um, and don't, try not to bombard them either if you don't know. Maybe once a week might be ideal, maybe twice a month. Uh, it's up to you and you know your connection with the lead. Okay, but as a rule of thumb, I usually do um, you know once a week, and uh, yeah. So last but not least, you have the email CC. Whatever email you put on here will be CC, so that way you can also get the email and see what's being sent to your clients. So it might be a good idea to pop your email in here, and um, yeah, always stay up to date as far as what's going on and what's being sent out. Okay. Once you have all of those criteria set. You can go ahead and click set alert or save and send. So the, there's a difference between these two, okay? The difference is when you click on set alert, this will take effect, it will be saved, and it will start on the next... Um, uh, so th this is the best way to explain this. <laughs> so if I was to set this alert, one will not... Results will not go out immediately. It will wait for, you know, the next week to start sending them out because right now I have it sent on once weekly. If I had this set on daily, it will not send one immediately. It'll wait for the next day to start the cycle. Okay. If I was to do it once a month, it's going to wait a month before it starts sending those out. Okay. So what you can do is if you want to save this alert, make it active and also start sending one immediately and start, you know, the, the frequency uh, immediately, what you would do is save and send. So what this means is if this was set to once a week, if I click save and send, it's going to send one immediately and start every other week based on that day. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. If that was confusing, uh, leave a comment in the description so we can talk about it or book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so we can tailor this to you and your client. Okay, it's absolutely free. Link in the description or scan the QR code that pops up, you know, here and there within this video. Uh, but yes, this is how you create an alert and that's the difference between set alert and save and send. So I'm going to set this alert Okay, which means it's not going to be sent out immediately. It's going to wait on the next, you know, week to send this out because that's what I set. Okay, so once you set up the alert, you'll notice that you're, you're going to get a results tab. All right, so the results tab, this is where you can see all of the results, you know, that match the criteria we've set. If you notice, we have two properties. Uh, one of them is a three bed, two bath. And as you can see, it does fit my criteria. I wanted at least three bedrooms and I didn't specify a number of bathrooms. If you notice here, still matches the criteria. We have at least three bedrooms, but it looks like we hit a match with more than three and we hit with five beds. And this one has two baths and uh, also one half bath, it looks like. So here you'll be able to see all of the results and you also get to see, obviously, based on this, what's going to be sent out to the client, okay? So from here, you can manually email the results. So if I was to click on this, Alicia will be sent an email with these current results that are on the recent results. You can text these results to Alicia if her phone number is on file, or you can copy a link to all of these results and just text it to her or email it to her or, you know, post it on social media, um, wherever you want to put that link or share, however you want to share it. But see, notice how at the top left, we're back on the screen now, it shows me alert one and there's two right below it. So what that tells me is there's two results that came out of you know the search criteria or search alert. So here you, I can already see there's only going to be two properties sent out so far. Okay, but maybe by the next week, because we've set it at a, 
you know weekly frequency maybe there will be more properties that you know kind of build up and then it'll send them all out at the same time so you can keep track of that there so that is how you build a search alert and if you notice uh, we also have alert 2 we can set so if I was to click on this right here we can build a whole separate alert and that could be its own thing now Alicia would be notified with these two alerts okay now very quickly if I go back to the one we built by clicking right here on alert 1 I can toggle this off I can turn it back on and if I want to edit it, I have an edit button right below. I can click edit and make changes to the criteria. So maybe Alicia wants me to be more specific or include something else. I could click edit. And then once I change all of those details in here, I could go ahead and press update alert. And now it's going to submit those changes so that Alicia can get exactly, um, you know, the kind of property she wants to see within her weekly alerts that we've set. Okay. So, that is how you do that. Search alerts are a great way to, you know, have some online, you know, traffic to your KV Core website. Because at the end of the day, we want to collect as many leads as possible and get people to keep going to our website to keep looking at properties. And search alerts do that very, very well. It's an automated process. You just set it up once and just let it do its thing and you don't have to touch it anymore every lead you set up with a search alert will keep receiving that material you'll always be the top of mind agent because they keep seeing your material and uh, whenever they're ready to buy they have properties that they can see on your website okay so that's why it's very important to set everyone on your contacts list uh, with a search alert if possible and sometimes even if you don't know where what kind of properties they're looking for or what area it doesn't hurt to just set them up with a generic uh, search alert like something within the the you know the biggest city the most popular cities or the whole county maybe and if they reply to your email they can tell you hey what about this city or hey I'm not interested in looking in this county can you set me up with another county or if they reply all together that's what we want at the end of the day you want that back and forth with the clients and as soon as you have that open line of communication you can talk to them engage where they're at and kind of you know set them up with the correct alert if they even want one in the first place okay but this at least gets you you know closer to opening that line of communication with the contact okay but hey i hope you were able to find a lot of value out of this video and if you have any questions, again, leave them in the comment section below. Book a free one-on-one -on -one session with me. It's absolutely free. Everyone that, you know, scans a QR code or sets that up with me, I've heard nothing but great things. So I can't wait to talk to you and get you set up on your KV Core journey, CRM journey, branding, social media, you name it. I would love to talk to you about all of that stuff, okay? So make sure to like comment if you have any questions concern or if you love it hey put a thumbs up in the chat like this video it helps my channel a lot and subscribe so you do not miss any more of these um, thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video bye bye